Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us for our do-it-yourself graduation photos with Peer Forward and our Peer Forward alumni, special guest, and co-founder of RTW Photography, Lavelle D. Monger. We're here also with Victoria Navarro, our social media specialist and communications coordinator here at Peer Forward, and we're so grateful that you joined us. We understand that graduation looks a little bit different this year, and we want to do our best to support you, so let's get to it. All right, so you're a graduate, what now? Whether you graduated from high school, college, or your graduate program, understand that this is a huge milestone and an incredible accomplishment. And so when it comes to accomplishments, one of the best ways to solidify it in your mind, to truly put your stamp on it, is to commemorate that accomplishment that you actually achieved, right? You wanna celebrate all of your successes. And so celebrations may look a little bit differently this year. We don't have the ceremonies that we're used to, and we can't exactly celebrate by going out to our favorite restaurants or even visiting our family. So it's important that we take simple and small measures to celebrate. And today, we want you to celebrate by taking some photos. If you look cute, you feel cute. If you look successful, you feel successful, you are successful. So let's put it in a picture. So our special guests are great at putting it in pictures. We have Victoria Navarro, who I mentioned, works for Peer Forward as our communications coordinator. Victoria, could you introduce yourself to the people? Sure, thanks AJ. Um, I'm excited to be here. As AJ mentioned, um, I work as communications coordinator at Peer Forward, and a lot of that means taking pictures at events, posting on social media, really having that eye of what's gonna look good on all our marketing materials. Um, so photos are a big part of my job. And in my personal life, I'm a big um, nature photographer, kind of amateur nature photographer, <laughs> and love to take photos when I'm out on nature walks around the DC area. Um, so I'm really um, always thinking about like, how can I use my camera that's on my phone to take some really good shots? So that's a little bit of what I'm gonna talk to you guys about in the next slide. Um, but I'm excited to be here. Thanks, AJ. No problem. And now let's hear from Lavelle. Good evening, everyone. Um... First and foremost, I would like to thank Peer Forward for hosting this wonderful uh, kind of a tutorial. Uh, as you all may see, that we all are utilizing technology now for this virtual conversation uh, that we're going to have. Um, again, I am Lavelle. I did my workshop in 2008. Ooh, a long time ago, right? Um, fell in love with photography. Actually, liked photography back then. Uh, it wasn't until 2013 where I actually was able to get the money to buy my first DSLR camera and I actually start learning uh, the craft of photography and videography. And shortly after that, when I got my first check, uh, we'll talk about that a little later, I uh, decided to take it more serious. And then now, 2020, I've uh, been a part owner of a photography company here in Central Florida. Uh, I had no idea I was gonna do this when I was in you all's uh, shoes um, as peer leaders. And I'm happy about everything that's going on now, and although we have some troubling times, it's great that I can share the knowledge that I was able to gain to help you all in a different capacity. And we are so grateful to have you. Thanks again, Lavelle. Um, and so if you need to see what Hustle looks like, look to our alumni right here. He turned his hobby and something that he learned into into an actual career and a business. So we're so glad to have your expertise on this webinar. All right, kick it right off. We're going to send it over to Victoria, who's going to explain how you can use your phone and your phone settings to make the best graduation photo shoot. Thanks, AJ. All right, so my first tip when using your phone and really working with the settings to get the best photos um, is to use the grid lines. So grid lines are optional on your camera, um, but if you go to settings and then you go to phone, it'll allow you to play with some of those phone settings. I mean, you can, you can turn on the optional grid lines in that settings portion. Um, and then when you go back to your photo app, um, it'll show you vertical lines and horizontal lines that you can use when you're actually taking your photos. So um, these will work in your normal photo settings or if you're using portrait mode. Um, and these are generally just gonna help you with one alignment, especially if you're holding the phone with your hands to make sure you're aligned with um, the vertical lines or the horizontal lines on your camera. And second, it'll help you with um, composition. So it'll help you design a little bit more interesting shots. Um, I know Lavelle will talk a little bit more about this later, but um, the grid lines can really help you to just make a more interesting photo. Um, the second tip that I wanted to give you guys was adjusting the settings in portrait mode. Um, and alternatively, if you're using an Android phone, um, the same setting would be um, used in live focus. That's kind of the equivalent of portrait mode. Um, so some of the settings that I think you guys should um, really pay attention to when you're taking these grad photos is 
Um, one uh, is the small icon uh, for iPhones. This will appear on the top right corner. And it looks like a little letter F in a circle. Um, and that's going to help you uh, change the depth. So that's the depth control uh, button. And what it's going to do is it'll let you um, pull a slider back and forth, either left and right. Um, if you pull it more to the left, you're going to um, decrease the depth control. And that's going to help you to like, increase the blur in the back of your photo. Uh, and so if you really want that background blurred, um, you would bring that to the left. Um, and if you bring it the opposite way, it's going to make sure that the blur in the back of you is um, decreased. So you're going to get a little bit more sharper image from the background. Uh, and so that really depends on how much you want uh, the person in the middle, your subject of the photo to be in focus. Um, the second thing that I'm going to say about portrait mode and light focus uh, is making sure that your subject is far enough from your background so that that blur can really um, work at its best. So the camera obviously is trying to do a lot of things at once. And if you're in portrait mode, um, the camera is trying to find the outline of your subject so that it can distinguish it from your background. Um, so if you get your, your subject to stand at least one to two feet away from the background, that'll help the camera really be able to focus on what the lines are, how to distinguish from the background, and give you a much sharper image so that that blur doesn't start to bleed into some of the shirt lines or your hair or anything that you actually want in focus. Um, and my last tip will be um, to use burst mode. So burst mode, is the option where you hold your finger down on um, the button that you press to take the photo and you hold it down for a few seconds and this will help you take a bunch of photos per second um, and so that would be really great to use if you want to get one of those shots where um, your grad is throwing their their cap in the air and you want to get some of those action shots um, this is really going to be where you're going to get a bunch of photos at once and then after you take that photo um, you should go back to your gallery and open that photo and click on settings at the very bottom of the um, tool options. And this is where you're gonna be able to go through individually all of those photos that you took. Um, this will give you the option too to select one or several of those bursted images um, so that you're not taking up so much space with all these images on your, um, in the memory on your phone. Uh, it'll let you pick one or two or three and then you just keep those um, still shots of that action shot that you took. Um, so that's gonna help you to get a little bit more dynamic photos um, and really use your camera in your photo for uh, the best shots that you can get. Um, and I'm going to pass it over on to uh, back to AJ so we can talk a little bit more about how to get those pro shots on your phone. Absolutely. And I love what you said about action shots. Action shots are so incredibly important for big photo shoots like this. So whether it's you throwing your cap into the air or you cho you're choosing to do something, you know, a little bit out there that totally represents who you are in your time in college, go for it, and Victoria just told you how to get the shot. So, let's talk about more shots that we can get and to make a graduation photo shoot truly a graduation photo shoot. We're gonna pass it on to Lavelle. So like we yeah. said, Lavelle D. Munger is a co-founder of RTW Photography based in Florida. You can visit their website, gradwave.co. Give them a visit, they have a wonderful portfolio, and if you need some inspiration, they are the ones to go to. So. Why don't you tell us about how to make a photo shoot truly ours, Lavelle? All right. Thank you, AJ. And um, first, I would like to start with saying that Victoria gave some wonderful information uh, regarding uh, how to utilize your phone. And phones are so, so close to DSLR right now. It's amazing. I might be out of a job in a couple of years. Um, but yeah, so one of the biggest things that, that um, I like to talk about is metering your light and what that looks like so most smartphones now um they have an option where if you poke if you poke on your phone the actual subject um, then you can roll your finger up or down and when you're looking for metering and light you want to make sure that you meter it towards the object and not necessarily the background um, so there are moments where the subject will be fully um, exposed but the background will be blown out depending on what time of day um, that you utilize um, your, your phone or when you try to take pictures. Um, and then vice versa, you can focus on the background and it'll be well exposed, uh, like some of the pictures that we have here um, on this model on the, on the slide. Um, but the person, you won't see, be able to see the person, it'll be too dark because the person will be under, you know, the subject will be underexposed. Um, so make sure that you meteor light uh, for the actual subject because that's what the individuals are going to look at when they look at the picture. Um, and then two, the photo composition, which is a great piece uh, mentioned earlier with the grid lines. So utilize the grid lines. If you, you know, looking at these pictures, um, 
the two, the Morgan State, and this, uh, you see they are perfectly centered in the middle, uh, which is great. Uh, then you also see the Morgan uh, sign in the background, so it gives you an idea of what you want to focus on. Um, bad composition, um, for example, would be if you see the young lady um, that's, that's up, and she was, her head was more to the left of the frame, and then you can't see her legs, you just see her head, and then she's looking out the frame. That's, that's horrible composition, because it just look weird, right? Um, so make sure that if the head is facing um, somewhere, that it's always facing the center. So never have the head looking off frame because you'll never know what the individual is looking at. Uh, if you're looking in the middle, it'll guide um, the viewer's eyes exactly where you want them to go. Um, and then where to edit. So our phones have some amazing editing tools. Uh, I'm the same iPhone, uh, but I'm quite sure Android has some similar features as well. Uh, but my top feature uh, to use is the brilliance in the iPhone because it allows you to create this more uh, vibrant light um, and colors, uh, which is amazing. It can turn a dry, you know, dusty picture into something that's beautiful and colorful, um, like the one that we have with the young lady with the yellow shirt on and the reds and the greens, everything just starts popping. Um, and then also utilizing the sharpening tool and weather and what a temperature. Uh, which controls how warm or how cold, cool you want your picture to look. Um, and you all can find all of this information as it pertains to editing uh, on YouTube. It's great that we're having this conversation now so we can kind of give you some pointers on what to look for um, when you go into the editing process. Um, some of the more advanced uh, editing tools are, Light, are the Lightroom app and the Photoshop app, which allows you to transfer those to your computer if you have Adobe Suite. Uh, I'm not getting paid from Adobe right now. Uh, these are just some tools that I like to use. And one of the best things I like to use with Lightroom and Photoshop app is, is when you really want to like smooth out the skin. Uh, that's really a great look for portraits. So don't make it smooth it out too much where you can't see lines in your face and you can't separate your chin from your from your <laughs> from your neck. Uh, so make sure that it looks as realistic as possible. Um, but the smooth skin is a definitely a um, a more portrait. Uh, retouch type look uh, for the guys you know we naturally don't have like you know guys really don't want to have baby bottom skin uh, so make sure that we can have it look as realistic as possible awesome all right all right and this one uh clean the lens uh, so regardless of you know if you're using your front lens or your back lens right now phones are just too advanced for you to have to choose. I have an iPhone 7, so I still got the old type of lens. Um, but I know I utilize the iPhone 11, and oh my God, it's so much flexibility you can do with that. Um, but what's the use of having a good lens if it's not clean? Uh, so you can use a, a micro uh, fiber cloth to kind of clean the lens. You can use a t-shirt, whatever you have around, um, but just ensure that the lens is clean. Um, they also have detachable lenses where you can buy if you really want to take the next level with your portraits and your photos uh, that you can obtain. But the first step, clean your lens. Uh, you're not going to get a good picture if you don't clean your lens. Um, use portrait mode as much as possible. Uh, one thing I love about iPhone is that it tells you like if you're too close or if you're too far, and it kind of gives you an idea. And what the portrait mode does, it creates this wonderful picture in a sense that the object is focused and that the background begins to blur out. And what's gonna take your portrait mode to the next level is when you do it, doing a perfect like lighting um, setting or scenario. So to get the best light, uh, think about soft light. So the biggest soft box in the world that comes natural are clouds. Um, so what that does is it diffuses the light, uh, which is the sun, and it creates a more flattering uh, photo. So it's even light, there's no heavy or hard shadow, uh, you don't have to worry about squinching and uh, and the camera or anything. Uh, it's just, it makes your life um, a lot easier. Um, and if there is some type of sun, if you do it during the hours of when the sun is rising or when the sun is setting, it allows you to get an angle on the sun. So that means it's going to create um, shadows and or um, an angle of light where you can kind of tilt your subject uh, and that light like to utilize it as best as possible. Uh, one of the biggest things I tell individuals is to, uh, and that I practice a lot, is find a shade. Um, which shade, it gives you a balanced light. Uh, beware of 
putting people around trees because what can happen is that the trees are creating weird shadows um, on the face and are on the subject and it just gives it and if it's not intentional it just gives this weird look and it makes it harder to edit um, and post amazing and speaking of editing and posts there are some post questions that we have for you all you great some great advice on how to really turn a graduation shoot into our own. I'm so excited to see what our peer leaders can come up with using your advice. Um, but just some post questions. So for our peer leaders who may not have anyone to help them out with taking these graduation photo shoots, or if they are practicing social distance and they don't have anyone who can take these pictures for them, um, what are some things that they can do to be able to achieve these kind of photos by themselves? And we'll take whoever can answer first. Uh -huh. Perfect. Uh, then I've been talking a while, so I'll let Victoria chime in. All right, sure. So obviously, if you have no one else, there's always a selfie mode in your phone. Um, the newer iPhones let you use the selfie mode, the portrait mode in selfie mode as well. So there's still that option. But um, sometimes it's good to have more distance than what your arm length will allow. So some options, if you don't have somebody to take pictures for you, is to use a tripod. There are always um, tripods that are smaller that you can use like on a desk, on some kind of uh, platform or the larger ones, of course, the more traditional um, taller ones, or you can always prop your phone against um, some kind of sturdy uh, su surface, um, putting something behind it like a book, something hefty that you can balance your phone on. Um, just make sure that it's not somewhere too high that your phone will fall off of, um, but just finding like a sturdy place that you can level your phone on um, and then you can always use the timer setting on your camera so that you can um, have time to set up and then pose for your picture. Amazing. And, so, and what I'd like to add to that, uh, there's also, if you are, I know a lot of us have Apple Watches, um, us Apple people. Um, so if you have an Apple Watch, there's also um, a setting that, well, application on the watch that allow you to take pictures as well. So you can actually view the picture. Um, and what I typically do is I can look at it, make sure my composition is right, make sure my lighting is right. And then I put my timer on so I can hurry up and push the button and then kind of like, you know, get my hands together and get pre ah, and prepare for the actual picture. Um, so that helps as well. And um, there was a vir like viral phenomenal that went down for a minute uh, earlier during the quarantine uh, stages that individuals were taking portraits through screenshots of a FaceTime. Um, so if you know someone that's a photographer, you can ask them if they provide their service and then they can connect with someone that kind of walk you through the angle, the different angles and the composition and everything. And they can just screenshot the actual picture and then edit it from there. So that's an option as well. Oh, I love it. Using technology in all different types of ways. I would never think to take a picture over FaceTime. That's amazing. So I'm glad you're putting ideas in our head. So peer leaders, you know, get those ideas percolating. Let's go get these pictures popping. Um, so another question that we have for you are what are some tips about really capturing the right background for a graduation photo shoot? As you can see, um, the photos that we have here as an example have some very interesting backgrounds, but what advice would you give? Uh, the biggest advice is to use something that doesn't have many distractions and be intentional. So if you see the Southern Connecticut or, yep, Southern Connecticut uh, background, that you know, you know that that's the school that the individual went to and that's something that they want to show showcase with the photo. Um, if you look at that guy right there, uh, <laughs> That's actually, I was at a library and I knew that the lens that was being used was gonna blur out that background. If you see how the leading lines kind of direct the, the person, the eyes to me. So you see the green background of the grass, you see kind of like the um, horizon, you know, horizon of the, the houses in the background, everything is leading to me. Um, and then if you see the streets, they also have leading lines as well, where the trees are going directly uh, to the young lady. And then you have the lines that's on the street and you know you can with graduation photos you can always figure out ways well with portraits period you can always figure out ways to be creative and create the vision that you have in your head um, a bad background would be something that's just too distracting where i look at this picture i don't i don't know exactly what i'm looking at and that can be a that can be a composition issue as well excellent and so to our last post question and this is very very important for me in particular so there are regular photo shoots where you get together with your friends and you just, you know, you try to hit them angles. But what is key to taking a graduation photo shoot to the next level? 
I'll go first on this one. Um, and I'll do a pitch about uh, what to wear to make this photo really pop. Um, so if you're graduating, a lot of times you have a lot of uh, stoles or cords, um, a lot of different colors going on. Um, and you want to be wearing, you want to show that all in your picture, right? So um, the outfit, usually um, a good technique is to pick something that's a solid color um, and usually a bit more muted colors or at least something that is uh, a uniform color. So um, in the pictures we see here, we see some like black, white, some uh, navy blues, um, some like muted burgundy. Those all make their all their regalia really pop and stand out. Um, and that's really the, the focus of the picture too. So um, anything that's kind of a solid color, not too many prints, as we said, that can be a little bit distracting. Um, so solid colors, some maybe muted colors, um, or go with something that makes you feel confident as well. Um, something that makes you feel powerful, something that really makes you feel um, like you can really like soak up and stand in your power and take an awesome photo. Perfect. And to add to that, um, vice versa, if you want to do something extreme with your clothing, at least make sure your background doesn't complement the extreme or try to be over over the top. So if you are wearing these, you know, prints or whatnot, I wouldn't recommend it. Make sure that the background is more solid. Um, so that way you can stand out more um, when a viewer sees the picture. Um, and then another thing to add is just props. So there's confetti, uh, there's glitter, there's uh, things to say class of. So make sure that you have something that's that is going to take your portraits from a portrait to a graduation portrait so they can know exactly what they're looking at and why they're looking at it. Um, and then another thing I know we mentioned earlier um, was about, you know, using organizations that you were a part of um, doing, you know, doing studies, significant things that kind of direct you or can kind of tell the story of the things that you've done um, or, you know, in school and or, for example, I played basketball, I played football, and I did drum line. So I did pictures with my drumsticks, I did pictures with my basketball, I did pictures with my football. And uh, that that way, when I see those pictures years from now, I can tell my kids or whatnot, like, hey, you play basketball. No, you didn't. Let me see a picture. I can show them a picture. Uh, so those things kind of help out as well as you tell your story, because you're really just storytelling. Pictures is a form of storytelling, and you just have a still frame or a still image of that to tell that story. Amazing. I couldn't have said it better than myself. And I mean, who better to say it than the expert? Thank you so much, Lavelle. Thank you so much, Victoria. We are so happy to have you today. And I'm so thankful that we were able to ask these questions and get to the truth of how to do a DIY graduation photo shoot. So you heard it here first, peer leaders. Here are a couple of things that you can do in order to make your photos pop. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to marketing at peer4.org and we'll be happy to you know, give whatever answers we possibly can and help you get to this graduation photo shoot. So again, thank you so much. Share this video far and wide with your other peer leaders and it's time to say goodbye. So goodbye. Thanks everyone. Thanks.